Five years ago, the entire office furniture market hit a devastating slump, due largely to the dot-com bust and the business effects of the disaster on 9-11. The market shrank by a whopping 40%, forcing furniture makers into major cutbacks. Herman Miller may have weathered the storm as well as any of them. Since the slump, the company has dramatically improved operating income as a percentage of sales. It grew from negative 5.4% in 2002 up to 9.1% in 2006. In addition, Herman Miller has been able to reduce space by 40% while maintaining $2 billion in volume. Herman Miller Incorporated, an office furniture manufacturing company in western Michigan, is known for its award-winning and progressive designs. Industry observers know that their management is progressive as well. With assistance from Toyota, the company has created the Herman Miller Production System, HMPS, which is modeled on the Toyota manufacturing system of lean manufacturing. The company has also adopted economic value added, or EVA, accounting methods to more accurately measure performance. EVA is comprised of two elements, really, your no pad or net operating profit after tax and your capital charge. So it's really, in essence, your operating income. So sales, less your cost of goods sold, less your operating expenses, kind of takes you down to your operating income. And then we adjust that for taxes, so you get an operating profit after tax. And then from that, you subtract your capital charge. And the capital charge is composed of two things. Uh, one, it's your EVA capital base times your weighted average cost of capital. So no PAT unless your capital charge gives your EVA. So EVA measures a wide range of important factors not covered by generally accepted accounting practices, or GAAP, especially the capital charge in taxes. This gives management more accuracy in the measurement of resources like equipment purchase or repair and inventory costs. EVA helps a company determine if it is really creating or destroying its wealth. It's especially helpful in supporting waste reduction. What the EVA framework has done is provided us to go one step beyond looking at things from just an income statement approach and really combines both looking at the income statement and looking at the balance sheet. I think if you go back in our history, we used to focus more on traditional income statement measures, so profitability, sales, cost of goods sold, kind of operating expenses. So if you could lower the piece part through a plan, if you could spend a million dollars a machine that really got you a lower cost per unit, and if it took a batch size of a thousand of them to get the lowest piece part through a plant, you'd do that. Single piece flow says, now if the customer needs 50, run 50 all the way through the process. You think about it and says, well, that's going to get you a a higher piece part, so that's not a good thing on your cost of goods sold, right? That's true. But the benefits you get is it reduces your inventory. Is that a good thing? Absolutely, because in the EVA world, inventory, by the way, fits into your cost of capital calculation, so it impacts your capital charge and therefore drives or lowers your EVA. So you can reduce your inventory, that helps your EVA. They go together. Here's an example of how EVA and GAAP have given conflicting signals at Herman Miller. Assuming these are their production costs, then gross profit increases with larger batch runs. With lean production, costs are reduced and the savings improve the gross profit. The gap view stops here and suggests that Herman Miller keep building in larger batches and send the excess to inventory. But EVA credits reductions in inventory, fixed and total assets resulting from the lean HMPS approach as well as the sale of an unneeded warehouse. The result is better EVA profitability with the lean HMPS approach versus the wasteful batch process. When large batches of parts were produced, the excess headed for inventory, and that expense was not charged to the department that created the inventory. It is now with EVA, so the EVA financial incentive is to produce only what's needed. Similarly, when equipment needs repair or replacement, that gets charged to the department rather than to some general capital account. This increases the incentive to maintain equipment and keep costs down. We try to apply um, our intelligence, our experience, our innovation before we throw money at a problem. So effectively what we ask people to do is mind before money. Uh, we literally, when looking at a problem or, or an opportunity, 
attempt to solve it with zero capital uh, and then move from that point only as far as we need to to, so to effectively solve the problem. They wanted to speed up the delivery mechanism of the bases to the line so that there was less manual labor involved in the amount of effort it took to get the base and put it on the line. If we would have taken a more automated approach, kind of a traditional approach, we would have gone and put a more automated machine in place which might have cost us $10,000 to build. Instead, the employees kind of working in the tool shop in the back created a gravity-fed machine that accomplished the same objective and did it for one-tenth of that number, maybe $1,000 to get to that same point. What we tended to do in paint was batch products by color. Uh, and we tended to do certain colors at certain times of the day or certain days of the week. We reduced our paint changeover times to the point where they're essentially insignificant to the production process and therefore allowed us to paint in exactly the same order as we were producing in assembly and, and what our customers were ordering. And that created, again, a single piece flow situation. The intersection of HMPS and EVA in our world happens when we find a cost savings project that requires an investment. Uh, the traditional methodology in sending us product is in a big crate that requires a forklift truck. And all of a sudden we say, wait a minute, we can make life much better for the, for the operation if they were in small totes. From an EVA perspective, you gotta make sure that the savings that you're going to gain from investing in that EVA tote has to overcome the capital charge, has to overcome our cost of capital, and somehow improves our sales. Many, many companies are going to China and realizing significant cost price savings. I would rather have a West Michigan supplier that's close to our plant where when there's a problem we can solve it right away and keep the business running and pay a slight premium to that. If you go to some of the assembly lines that really utilize the capital efficiently through the process, like the air on chair line, probably our highest line, it's turning 300 turns a year. So they are pretty much every day, raw materials are coming in, sometimes twice a day, and at the end of the day they've been consumed and shipped out and the products out the end door. HMPS principles, absolutely. Single piece flow through the plants, quick, simple. EVA principles, absolutely, because you utilize your inventory a lot quicker, keeping your inventory balance lower and therefore your capital um, charge lower and improving your EVA. Economic value-added accounting takes a broader view to look beyond operating income alone to account for the true cost of capital. Herman Miller managers find that EVA measures used in conjunction with managerial accounting measures are better for measuring business performance than managerial accounting measures alone. They enable managers to make quick, sure-footed decisions at each turning point. EVA and HMPS enabled managers to lead the company through the recent storm and to rebound beyond expectations.